I studied electrical engineering and was drawn to Rice because it, uh, I wanted engineering. It was a good engineering school, and the price was right, which was zero at the time. <laughs> and I, had, I was very fortunate in that in my sophomore year, they took uh, a few of us and did an experimental course. And we had, instead of taking some of the courses that, for an engineering degree, we took philosophy from Roger Senoff, who was a famous philosophy teacher at the time, uh, logic, uh, and special mathematics, highly theoretical mathematics. And, and, uh, and it was just a very different introduction to the humanities and, and advanced mathematics that we would have not gotten another way. And we had a one semester course in introduction to semiconductors and computers. And I decided that that sounded like a better place to be than rotating machinery and transmission lines. So I studied the markets and determined that IBM was a leader in computers and Texas Instruments at that time was a leader in semiconductors. So I interviewed just those two. It turned out to be a good decision. IBM wanted to send me to the West Coast in research, and I really wanted to get into the business side of it quickly. And Texas Instruments wanted me in applications engineering, and so I decided to go to Texas Instruments. And that was a very good uh, situation because uh, I, had, uh, I had an interesting career there that moved me around all over the place. Uh, and had I not been in Dallas, I wouldn't have met my wife, Stephanie. And so that was a, that was a, a prime benefit of all of that. When I went with the company, I think we only had about 400 people in the in the semiconductor business, if that. When I actually, when I was president of the semiconductor business there, a number of years later, I had over 30,000 people. So that kind of growth occurred in a short career there. When we developed the digital signal processor, uh, I wanted to get an understanding of the science that underlie, underlay the, uh, the DSP. And so I went back to Sid Burris, who was uh, a classmate of mine and who was now Dean of Engineering at, at Rice, and to see if we could have some projects together. It turned out we not only had projects together, we had over 20 of them. And, and, uh, and the, in the process, Sidney wrote the, the basic book on digital signal processing and all with Texas Instruments parts in it. So we ended up uh, with that as a real driver for the market and, uh, and as a result we ended up dominating the market for a period of time and it was a very, very profitable uh, piece of business. It ended up uh, about a quarter or a third of Texas Instruments business in a short amount of time. One of the things you learned at Rice was to be fearless. In those days, uh, we were working on big rotating machines, this, this big. And if you had your hand in the wrong place, you could get a finger torn off, or if you got across the the, the terminals, you might get 400 volts and, and get a good shock. So at MIT, they were had little model engines and and or motors, and they they'd work with these model motors, and it seemed that, that they learned the same things. But when asked, when we asked the the head of the engineering department. Why couldn't we do it like MIT? He had a very simple answer. You can't learn to tame lions playing with kittens. <laughs>